Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new. I am back today with another plant video. About six months ago, I showed you guys my entire Hoya collection and it has grown considerably since then. So I decided to make another Hoya collection video for you guys. I did discover online shopping over quarantine. So I have quite a few. In fact, I have 40 Hoyas to show you today. I decided not to include duplicates. I do have probably five or six different versions of some of these plants, but I just decided to show you my favorite one out of the group, if that makes sense. If you do want to see every single Hoya that I own, even the duplicates, then you guys can tune in about two weeks from now and watch my updated houseplant tour video. And the reason it's going to be in two weeks instead of next week is because I am actually going on vacation. We're going to go see some of Jesse's family in Michigan, so I will be gone. Um, in other news, I quit my new job and I'm currently looking for more retail work because my Etsy has to be closed from October through about April because of winter weather. If you guys didn't know, I do live in Colorado and it's not really safe to send out plants over the winter time, unfortunately. But I will still link my Etsy shop down in the description if you guys are interested in following so you can be notified when I start selling plants again. This is probably going to be a bit of a lengthy video and I'll probably talk quite a bit, but hopefully you don't mind that because you probably love Hoyas as much as I do. So uh, they're in no particular order. I kind of grouped them by size, I guess. So we'll just go ahead and get started. The first plant I am showing you is this little one, and this is Hoya Dytera. I originally pronounced it Diptera because I did not know the P was silent, but you guys know me by now and you know I mispronounce the name of everything. I don't speak Latin, so <laughs> I just try my best. It is just in this little shot glass right here, it's just a cutting. And it hasn't grown at all since I showed you guys last time in my haul video. But I know it will soon. It's getting some healthy roots going on in there. I don't know if you can see. Oh, I almost dropped it. <laughs> and right now I just have it in this little pumpkin because um, it's October and that means it's Halloween in my world. So there we go. I can't believe I almost dropped the first one I showed you guys. Like, is it one of my videos if I don't spill soil on the carpet? And this next one is a Hoya Matilde. And this one is actively growing, if you can see down in there. This is another one that I ordered online. And it hasn't done a lot since I got it, but I think it is so adorable. And I think it's related to Hoya Serpens, which I have as well. I'll show you that in a bit. Next one. These first ones are all pretty tiny. I kind of enjoy getting the smaller cuttings at first because my collection is so huge and I'm running out of room. So I like to start with the little baby ones at first and watch them grow. This one is Hoya numelarioides. That's a mouthful. And I just got this one in the mail probably three days ago. It came bare root, so I put it in this teeny pot here and it's doing very well. The leaves are very fuzzy, which I didn't know, which was a nice surprise. And I just think it is the cutest thing ever. I have another one with fuzzy leaves and I showed you guys this one the other day and this is my Hoya Linearis. I did an unboxing of this one actually and I think it's doing pretty well. Looks like it's losing a leaf right here but 
it seems to be bouncing back pretty well from shipping and it's enjoying my bedroom with lots of bright filtered light. Okay, this one is Hoya Retusa. And I don't know if you guys recall, but this guy used to be in a six or eight inch pot and it had mealy bugs and it had scale and I felt confident that I could save it. And I guess technically I did save it. Uh, there are no bugs any longer. However, this is the only piece that I could save of that plant. I have since purchased more Hoya Retusa and they've been successful and I've propagated them and everything, but um, I thought I would give you an update on that one. Next one. This is my only Hoya that is in sphagnum moss. I also got this one off of Etsy and I just haven't disturbed it. It seems to be really enjoying the moss. I did receive it as a cutting and it only had a couple little roots and now it's starting to grow out of its net pot here. Forgot to tell you what it's called. This one is Hoya fungii. I believe when I showed you last time, it did not have these two new leaves up top. Super cool plant. It's another one that is just like slightly fuzzy. Like it almost feels like it shouldn't be, but it is. I don't know if that makes sense. I also kind of feel like a lot of Hoyas have that texture, which is super interesting to me, but they do gather a lot of dust that way. So I feel like I have to dust my Hoyas pretty often. Do you feel that way about yours? Uh, next ones are kind of more common Hoyas, but I still want to show you. This one is a Hoya Crimson Queen. And I do have about five or six of these because every time I see them, I feel compelled to buy them. I don't know why. They're just so pretty to me. This one in particular is my favorite because it has a lot of the all white leaves right here. And it has some pretty big leaves compared to some of my other ones. I just think it is stunning. Next one is very similar and it is a Hoya Crimson Princess. Another one that I always have multiples of believe right now this is my only one because I did give away some of my others. Just kind of trying to downsize my collection a teeny bit to make room for some new ones. But this one is also very pretty. And I mention this every time I talk about these, but in case you're new to Hoyas and you have one of these, the way you can help identify whether it's a crimson princess or a crimson queen is to look at the variegation on the leaves. If it has the white in the middle of the leaf like this, it's a princess. And if it has the white around the outside, it's a queen. Next one is my Hoya Carnosa Splash. Another super basic Hoya, very easy to find, but also very pretty. Next is another Hoya Carnosa. This is just an all green one. And this was actually my very first Hoya ever. And I didn't even know what it was when I first got it. It was completely unlabeled and I was just like in love with this thing. And I decided to get more once I found out what it was. Right, I've got another common one for you, and this is a Hoya pubicalix or pubicalix. Some people call it a pubicalix, pubicalix. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> this one was, I think, sold to me as a Royal Hawaiian purple because the leaves do come in uh, very like deep burgundy color, almost the color of my flannel. Uh, right now, mine is all green but the new leaves are very interesting. And I also have a silver splash and a silver pink of these as well. This is another one that I always feel compelled to 
purchase when I see it at the store. I really enjoy how the vines kind of tendril out like crazy compared to some other Hoyas. This one is a Hoya Carnosa Compacta. Sometimes it's referred to as a Hindu rope. And mine's a very slow grower. I think that's pretty common. I got this one at Home Depot a few years ago and I killed most of it. I was overwatering it. This one wants way less water than any other Hoya I've ever encountered. I only water it like once every month and a half or so and mine has done amazing since i figured that out it's put out a few new leaves here's one right here this one is a hoya crinkle eight and this is another one that i have multiples of in fact i have a much larger one that i sold cuttings of over the summer but this one is my favorite because i was killing this one for about a year and now it's really happy and it's growing like a weed and I just love it. This one is pretty similar to the compacta. It has like really wrinkly leaves but if you look closely it does have these little divots and it has eight of them hence the crinkle eight name. Okay here's another one that is related to that one and this one is Hoya Chelsea. I actually have a bunch of these. And I got these ones when they were not in the best condition. Let me take one out. And I've just been kind of nursing them back to health over the summertime. They look pretty similar to Hoya Crinkle 8, but they have a slightly rounder or more like heart shaped leaf, I suppose. And I did have a much larger one of these that I got at, I think, Lowe's or Home Depot. And that one sadly did not make it, aside from a few cuttings that I have in water. But I'm intending to grow these out and combine them into a much larger plant. Next one is a Hoya Quintiana. And mine's not very happy right now because I underwatered it. I hadn't watered it for like three weeks and a bunch of the leaves turned yellow and fell off. So it's really angry at me, but hopefully it'll recover. I just watered it yesterday and it seems to be feeling better. It's not wrinkly anymore. And then similar to that one, I have a Hoya Weyeriae. This is another one that's not too happy with me right now because I underwatered it as well. Honestly, I just got so caught up in the craziness of my everyday life that a few of my plants probably did not get all the attention they deserved, but it's forgiving. It's still growing. It has some baby leaves popping up right here. And then another similar shaped one. This one is Hoya Chaperdii. Or the string bean Hoya. Super cool. It's very tenderly. I'm very drawn to that in Hoyas. I don't know why. It just looks like they're reaching out for a friend or something. But. This one's also really cool. This one did not grow for the longest time and then over summer it decided like, hey, I'm gonna put out this whole new branch and a million leaves and just really awesome to watch grow. This next one is Hoya Incrasada. Incrasada, however you want to say it. And it hasn't really grown at all since I got it, but that's okay. It's taking its time. Up next, I have Hoya Australis. And I have, I think, seven of these, something like that. I have a lot of this plant, and I just love it. I think it's so pretty. 
It's interesting to me because the older leaves feel very waxy, very succulent, and then the newer leaves are always very thin and bendable, and they stay that way for months on end, which is so interesting to me. But this is my favorite one because it grows so fast. All of these leaves here have grown in the past like two months or so, which is really cool. And then I have my Hoya Australis Lisa. And I showed you guys this one in my unboxing video. I did trim it down in order to propagate so I can have a fuller plant. But it's doing very well. Then I have another Australis. This one is subspecies Tenuipes. Another one of my online orders. And this one is growing some new leaves since I showed you. This is probably one of my favorite Hoyas. I just love the way the leaves look. They're so big and beautiful and they're this really interesting kind of lime green color. Next, I'm going to get into some cuttings and some Hoyas that I have in LECA. And I have some in this little propagation station here. So let me show you. This is my Hoya Sunrise. And I did have this one in soil to begin with. And I realized that the seller did not disclose the fact that it did not really have any roots, which is okay. I mean, it's, it's alive still. So I have it propagating in water and then I'm actually going to switch it over to Lekka. But this is all I have right now. It's just three little leaves. It's got some roots going, which is good. And then I have another one that I was super disappointed with. Uh, the base of the plant arrived completely dead. So I am trying to propagate these pieces and they're not really rooting. I've been doing the plastic bag method in water. Um, which I think might be finally the method that's working. I can see the very start of a root on here, but this is Hoya Dolica Sparta. And I paid a lot of money for this plant. I paid like 50 or $60 for this plant and it arrived basically dead, um, which is very disappointing, but you do always take that risk when you are ordering plants online here is a piece of my Hoya Obscura and it has been quite a journey with this plant. It started doing really bad in soil so I decided to propagate a ton of it and then I'm going to convert it to Lekka. So this is just one little piece here. This next one is also just in water right now, and that's because I am also going to convert this one to LECA. I just think it's going to do so much better in LECA than it did in soil for me, and this is Hoya DS70. It's very similar to Hoya Bilabata, but it is slightly different. Um, the leaves are a little bit fuzzy, but this one I originally found at Home Depot, and I hit a ton of this plant. I unfortunately gave a bunch of it away, but the pieces that I have now are doing good and I look forward to seeing how it does once I do put it in LECA. I'm just waiting for the new roots to get a bit longer. Now I'll move on to some plants that I do have in LECA that are doing really well and the first one is this Hoya Serpens. I've got one of these in soil and that one is the mother plant for the cuttings I usually sell. I also took these cuttings from that plant and I rooted them and they're doing really, really well in like a, 
This is another one with slightly fuzzy leaves. And I just think it's adorable. It's one of the cutest Hoyas I think there is. And it grows super fast and it's really easy going. Yeah, just really easy Hoya, really adorable. And it doesn't take up a lot of room, which I also appreciate. Next one is a Hoya Polynura or the mermaid tail or fishtail Hoya. And I did lose a couple leaves on this one. It kind of went through a little shock from the shipping process, but it's doing really well now that I put it in LECA. I actually did have to cut the end of it off and completely start its roots over once I received it in the mail, but it's doing really, really great for me now. And then another one I ordered online and converted to LECA that is this Hoya Obovada Picta. So this one is a variegated Hoya Obovada and it's doing really well. It has a teeny tiny leaf trying to grow right there, if you can see that. I'm trying to show you without spilling water all over my floor. And then we're back to plants that are in soil. So this next one is another Hoya obovada. But I do have multiples of this plant. I love Hoya obovada. I think they're beautiful. I love how big the leaves are. I love how fast it grows. I would say it's a really great plant for beginner Hoya enthusiast because it does not want a lot of attention and it's very rewarding. All right. Now I have a bunch with some small leaves. So this one is a Hoya curtisii or curtisii. It grows pretty quickly. It roots super easily and I think it's really fun and adorable. It reminds me a lot of String of Hearts, the Serpeggio Woodyi, but it's a Hoya. I love how diverse and different the Hoyas can be. This one is a Hoya Lacunosa, and there are two different forms or I guess leaf size of these. I believe I have the one with the longer leaves. There's also different ones with like various amounts of like speckling and variegation and everything, but mine is just a plain green Hoya Lacanosa. And then this one is a Hoya Bella. And this one has been growing so fast for me and doing amazing over the summer. All of the lighter green colored leaves are brand new. Water this one a little more often than some of my other Hoyas. I feel like it wants water more frequently than the Hoyas with larger leaves for some reason, but it's super happy all the time, no matter what. This next one is a Hoya Carii, and this one is the one that has like a, a quilted shape to the leaf. I don't know if you can tell. See how it has like that veining there? Um, it was more obvious on some of its older leaves, but I think I overwatered it and did lose a good portion of this plant, but it's doing all right now. Next are more Hoya Carii. So I have this one and this is a Carii with the reverse variegation and I bought mine like this it's never had super strong variegation I'm trying to give it a really bright light to kind of bring out that color a little bit more but as you can see uh, it does have that lighter color in the middle of the leaf and then this one is a Carii Albo Marginata so this one has the variegation on the outside of the leaf 
And I really want to show you this teeny baby leaf it's working on. How sweet. This is one of my favorite plants. This is one that I spent a lot of money on. I actually found this one in person at a local nursery and I had to have it. I think I paid like 45 or 50 for it when it was only three leaves. <laughs> And it's grown since then, which is nice. So it gave me love back. It knew I wanted it. Um, next one is another Hoya Carii. And this is my favorite plant I think that I own because Jesse surprised me with it. And it's just this green Hoya Carii. It's magnificent, it's huge. And I love it because it was given to me by someone I love and it loves me too. Look at all the hearts. <laughs> I only water this one like once every month around that and it doesn't grow except it's gotten a bit taller and I just love it. Okay, I only have four more you guys, but they are pretty cool, I think. This one is a Hoya Multiflora. This is a different one than the one I unboxed for you guys because that one sadly did not make it. It kept declining after the shipping process, which again is normal. It's expected sometimes to lose plants when you ship them, but this one's doing really well. So I'm really happy and I hope I can keep this one alive. It's so interesting because it seems like a normal tropical foliage plant. It is so thin and not that like thick waxy leaf that you're used to with most Hoyas, but it's so pretty when it flowers. Mine hasn't yet, but if you have a chance, go look up photos. It's so cool. It's called the Shooting Star Hoya as a nickname because the flowers do resemble little shooting stars. It's so cool. Mine accidentally, I think, got a little cut on it, which is why there's that white mark right there. Hoyas are so interesting. If you cut them, they have like this um, milky substance that comes out because I believe they are related to milkweed. Anyway, I'm getting off track here, but this next one is a Hoya Lobii. Lobii, Lobii. And this one arrived to me snapped in half, which is so sad, but I figured I would try to save the stem. So I super glued it and I propped it up and it's growing. So it worked. Uh, these top three leaves are new since I did that, which lets me know that my my glue trick actually helped save the plant. I was so happy I was able to save it here. It's really cool. It reminds me a little bit of the Hoya pubicalix and a Hoya polynora mixed together because it has kind of similar like, veining to it and a similar like leaf layout to the polynora, but then it has uh, little speckles on it and kind of similar leaf shape to the Pubicalyx. I'm not sure if it's more related to one or the other. And then I have another one with pretty long leaves and I showed you guys this one in my unboxing and this is Hoya Malaflua. I was so disappointed with this one when it arrived because it was way smaller than what I paid for. I paid for a full four inch pot um, and I got one stem that was super like elongated and sad and so I've since trimmed it in order to propagate but it's doing really well the little piece that I have okay this last one is a Hoya macrophylla alba marginata I believe there's an all green one of this as well which I do not have but this one is just combined um, two different plants that I had ordered I was trying to make a fuller pot 
and it hasn't grown much at all except it is trying to put out a new little stem down here. I'll get close so you can see this little stump right there. Um, you can't really tell on camera, but that is new. It is growing, which is cool. And I love this Hoya for the veining on the leaves. It's super interesting. It has a really cool texture, kind of like a like a waffling texture, a waffled texture. But I really love it. Um, that is the last one that I own. I do have a pretty extensive wish list. That is everything. Um, let me know which one you liked the best. I think my favorites out of all my Hoyas are my Hoya Carii, my Hoya Polynura, and my Australis Tenuithes. I'll miss you guys. I'll be back in about two weeks with a houseplant tour. I hope you guys liked this one, and I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.